And it's gotta be Settlement Project That's the only thing that's soothing my soul Turn on the TV to Power Rangers Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Color Commentary Where we give you views from a different side I am your host, Danny J. Quick um, Yes, we're doing it a little differently today Because your boy didn't get a chance to go watch the movie We're, we're gonna be reviewing <laughs> Equalizer 2 uh, starring Denzel Washington, who everybody knows from all of his amazing films, uh, Glory, uh, The Equalizer, The Book of Eli, which is one of my favorite, um, and several others. Also directed by Antoine Fuqua, who directed one of my all-time favorite movies, Shooter, with Mark Wahlberg. He's also done uh, Southpaw and Olympus Has Fallen and uh, Brooklyn's Finest. I didn't I didn't really know that he'd... Uh, he directed that until recently. So he has a, a lot of good films under his belt. This is Denzel's first sequel we found out recently. And um, I'm hoping that it was a good movie because Denzel doesn't doesn't really do bad movies. But, you know, every every dog has its day. So um, I'm going to see if our our wonderful co-host here can convince me that it's worth going to see uh, this film within the next couple of weeks. So let's introduce our co-host. Uh, I, of course, am Danny J. Quick, CEO of Fourth Wall Productions, um, writer of Ace Blade. But what is going on with you, Sir Chuck? How are you doing this weekend? I'm doing good, doing good. Had a great weekend so far, great weekend. So, uh, but yeah, here with KFH Party Easy. Now I'm ready to get into, you know, talking about Denzel's sequel. Um, I see why he doesn't do sequels. I'll just leave it at that for right now. It wasn't horrible, but I'll just leave it as that. I, I'll, I'll I'll get into it a little bit more in the movie, but you know that's that's still my dude. That's still my dude. <laughs> so yeah, uh, maybe not do uh, another sequel, but uh, anyways, what Rashad? What are you reading? Well, I see you got a book out there. What's going on? It's a book one ninety nine. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Danny. I reached the uh, new record today. Most consecutive days of life. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something else. There's two types of pain in this world. There's pain that hurts and pain that teaches. Which one do you want? You got it backwards. You're going to war with me. Is are those are those lines from the movie or something? I I don't know. Like lines from movies. This is real life. Yeah, you think yeah, this is a game? Are. This is this is this is real life right here. You hear my 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 dryer going off over there? That's real life. You have a dryer going off in the middle of a movie? No, <laughs> it's real life. Uh, okay. Now, also, this is block band music and publishing where we have we sell music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation. <laughs> Let's get into this. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and get straight into it then. Um, try to convince me, you know, to to watch this movie. I'm gonna ask you. How did this movie win? What were some of the good things about it? I'm gonna start with you, brother Rashad, uh, for the good, for the good things. Tell me how it how it won. Okay, let's see here. How did this movie end? Well, I, I mean, how did it win? The first thing I'll tell you is that um, for what it lacked, pretty much all the way through the movie, <laughs> it made up for it at the very end. I'll tell you that the end to me was was quite good. Um, there was like a really big fight scene in the middle of a hurricane. Uh, I thought that was, I, mean, I thought that wasn't bad. Um, there was one part in there where the guy throws a, a flashbang grenade, like he goes from place to place, that's what he does. In order to, um, in order to see if Denzel's in there, he throws a flashbang grenade. Denzel set him up by having sugar all over the floor and had setting up a fan. So he was blowing the sugar. So as soon as he threw, threw the bang uh, grenade, it blew, it basically blew his insides out. So that was pretty cool how he did that. Um, and then, yeah, you didn't know that? You don't teach you that in the military? You had to use sugar, man. Throw sugar at people and then throw a grenade. Just kill them all. Is that advanced training? I'm a I'm a I'm a highly paid former assassin. I didn't take that. I didn't take that class in the military. I, I stopped that basic killing. I didn't go to advanced killing. Basic it's, killing? Yeah, it's, it's creative. That's our creative killing, on the spot killing. Yes. <laughs> also, um, the way that Denzel killed the last guy, it was so Oh, it was so brutal. <laughs> I mean, 
he like stabbed him and he stabbed him in his eye and then he came up with a knife here and then he just looked him in the eye and it was like two or three well about almost 10 seconds it was going back and forth looking at his eye and it's like oh god this is about to stab him in the eye but then he didn't he like grabbed him and stuck the neck the knife right in the back of his neck and like turned it like an old you know like like cars used to be like the gear shift used to be on the steering wheel it was like, <laughs> like he put through that mug in reverse and then Look dumped him face. in the water. I'm like, oh God, this is <laughs> okay. Well, try to he knows. try to take it. To, he tried to take it to Bushmaster level. Oh, oh and, man! Uh, <laughs> finally, the um, the very last scene. There was an old man all throughout the scene, and I'm gonna tell you, for me, it felt like that whole thing was a complete waste of time. Like, why are we spending time with this old man? Like, they spent significant time with him it's like this is a complete waste of time but it's like almost the very last thing um what happens is um what happens is um he's looking for this painting right because uh there was this painting that was that was in his home and um when he was in world war ii when world war ii happened he wasn't in the military but that painting got taken from him and he was trying to to get it back because that was the only picture that he had pretty much the only picture he had of his sister because he and his sister got separated uh, when World War II happened. So the whole movie, he's trying, he really wants his picture back. And uh, he keeps going to the courthouse and they just keep turning him down. Um, so anyway, at the very end, this lady walks, this dude walks in. It's like, hey, you know, I got something for you. And he's like, he can't believe it. And you expect, oh, he's got the picture. He's got the picture back. No, they got his sister. I was like, oh, like after all these years, like it's literally been like 40 years or more that he hadn't seen his sister. And now this old lady walks in, that's his sister. I thought that was great. Like that was definitely a little, a tear. And it made that whole thing pay off, but you just had to wait for the entire movie for that to pay off. Other than that, there was some really good fight scenes in the movie, but I really don't have a whole lot positive to say about it. So I'm gonna pass it on to Mr. Chuck. And also I expect to have a high uh, Uber rating, you understand? Mm -mm. I mean, Liv? Liv, no, I'm doing this. Was in this film. Uh, Sorry, I'm I didn't it. pay enough to be in this film. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but um, I, I, we like I said, me and uh, me and my wife watched the first one recently. Like when we were um preparing to go see this movie, we watched the first one on on on, uh, on cable, and that was one of the things that I did like about the first movie: the connection between him and all of the sub characters or whatever. He had, you know, the people that he was trying to help out. So it sounds like that was a, a recurring theme in this one to connect the, to the two. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's a good thing. But, uh, what would you say, Chuck? How do you, how would you say it, it won? How did it win? I have a couple couple points, I guess. That's all I could think of how it won. <laughs> um, but uh, and, and real quick, that uh, end scene, we, we differ upon that. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was unnecessary. <laughs> but, uh, Anyways, back to what I was going to say. Um, I like the talk that he had with the uh, young brother um, uh, trying to keep him out of the gang life. Like that whole just fatherhood type of, I guess, talk. Like, you know, you had a father figure there that's trying to keep him on the straight and narrow. The young kid can draw. Um, he has a bright future, but he's going to probably get tied into the wrong people and the wrong crowd. And seeing Denzel really, like, saving him and then giving him that that tough talk like you know you want to be a thug you want to do you be a killer yeah. take the gun take this gun put it at yeah. his head and like that was like i was like wow that's impactful right there like that whole like i guess it was maybe five minutes talk that they had i was like wow they need to replay that a few times just on just on little clips when they do like counseling sessions or <laughs> boys and Gore girls club like, you can kind of see how denzel like he loves to give back and i think that's that's the way it shows in the in the film like he's that guy that you know i don't need very much but i'm here i've done a lot of bad things in my life but right now i want to make you know life better for other people and i want to help them get where they want to go and you know he did that on the first one too with the um with the hooker girl you know helping her to focus her dreams but he he, he also continued that on on this movie as well also the uh the fight scenes when there were fight scenes i'll say that <laughs> when there were were fight scenes they were good i enjoyed the fight scenes that they were there um mm. i can tell they they did a little bit different with the camera so i don't know if denzel was definitely in the best shape for this movie to do mm. all his takedown moves 
So there was he was more he 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 pretty much did his work in about twenty seconds, and they kept it on, up here. Like he didn't flip mm -hmm. nobody over. It just like, he just be like that, you know stabbing. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was the um? What was the old karate guy that used to just break people arms and body body parts Steve, all the time? What? Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal. Steven it definitely Seagal. reminded me of a mm, Steven Seagal Steven. type of movie. Like, okay, I'm not bidding at all for this movie. Oh, so, I just got our title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just um, got for a movie, it's, it's going to be titled Denzel is Steven Seagal in the <laughs> 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 uh, And I guess the last thing I could really think about the movie that was really positive how it won was they let Denzel be Denzel in the movie. So they didn't really give him any standard, like any like, you know, parameters. You just be Denzel. You act the way you act on almost all your movies, or at least a lot of the, your movies. You do that. You do it good. And you, you know, you get a couple one-liners in there and, you know, that's all you need to do. So I got my feel of Denzel because it's, it's all about Denzel in the mute in the movie. So, you know, you get a lot of, he gets a lot of screen time. So I got all my feel of Denzel. So I feel good because I watched Denzel do his thing. So I, I give it that. That's how it won. For yeah, good old Denzel. Good old Denzel. You know, he's going to give you a couple things. You know, he's going to give you that face where he's shocked. And he sucks his bottom lip. He, you know, he's gonna do that one face. You know, he's gonna. Hey, do that. hey Danny, don't don't let Charlie throw you off, man. Uh, them playing that scene with him trying to give that boy tough love in schools is not a good idea at all. Particularly with teachers having they gonna be giving gun uh, teachers guns. Yeah, what he didn't tell you is, uh, he said, "Yeah, shoot me in the head." But then he's like, "All right, give me the gun. I ain't gonna do nothing." Oh, but I'm a liar. I'm a liar, though. What you gonna do? And he had the gun up to his head. Like, what you gonna do now? What you gonna do? Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> it's, it's a tough love type of thing. It's like you that have was to push real the tough with love. These young dudes. Sometimes you have to push the envelopes with young people. They don't think about stuff. So you, you, you do put them in those type of situations. It, it got our boy to start thinking too, didn't he? He, he I, leaves. Yeah, but he walked on. It would have got anybody he started, to start thinking. He start painting. He started start going to school, started painting. He ain't mess up no more. <laughs> yeah, let me let me put this gun down and pick up this paintbrush. Let me let me let me change my life. Uh, well, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I guess the the good things about about Denzel, you know, and and his movies are, you know, most of them at least do you know have that impact. They do at least hit you on some emotional level. It seems like you got that in there. Um, and of course, Denzel being Denzel, I was just talking to people on Facebook about. You know, who is the actual better actor between uh, Denzel and Will Smith? And, you know, Denzel is really impactful. He, you know, delivers his lines. He does all the things that he's supposed to do extremely well. But he is always Denzel in his movies. Like He's always Denzel. <laughs> you always see Denzel Washington in there, whereas Will Smith, he has a little more range. He played, you know, right. uh, the, the uh, uh, what, what was it? Tell the truth, the CTE guy. You know, I still he, ain't seen that movie. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, he played, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali, and you know, he really you know, dove into the characters there. You know, it's just a different kind of actor. It just depends on which one you prefer. Mm -hmm. But okay, I guess that's that's um, a lot of good things that I, right now I'm feeling like I will at least go see the movie. You know, while it's still in theaters. Let's see uh, what were how are some of the ways that the movie failed. I'm going back to you, Chuck. Uh, what were what were some of the ways that the movie failed? Uh, okay. So the pacing was horrible in this movie. It was horrible. It was like when you first get into it, it's like, oh, we see some cool stuff. And then it just takes like 30 minutes of nothing. Like just him driving his lift vehicle around the city, music playing and his clips of going back to his face and looking at people in the back seat mm -hmm. doing their problems. And then him going to his house and talking to people. And then him going back to his lift drive drive thing. Okay, and then it's gonna come back in. We're gonna have him meet up with his friend a little bit, and they're gonna chat, chat it up, you know, have a little dinner, you know, whatnot. And then it's gonna go him lift driving some more. Okay, and then it's gonna it's like so basically it takes like another thirty minutes before it actually has an impactful point in it again. Like oh wait, you gotta so deal you gotta deal with the painting the 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 well the paint the wall got graffiti <laughs> on it. 
So now we're going to talk about painting and how much it's going to charge. It's going to cost $650, $450. That's a little much. Let me come back. I thought about your offer. Uh, let's do it $200. <laughs> oh well, now now he has the painting. Uh, he he is I, I guess taped out the paint the the part to paint and so he could prime. I uh, forgot he had to talk about the prom and I tell him like, don't you know how to prom? Got to prom before you paint, son. So don't they teach you anything <laughs> in school? So he had to give him his lesson. Um, <laughs> that that was unfortunate pacing. It it kind of really got you out the movie. I actually watched the uh the first one before I went and saw that one before I went and saw the second one just to kind of get a real fresher. And it was, it's like, it almost felt like two different directors directed the movie. It was mm -hmm. like the other one just had every, I guess, part of the movie had a particular meaning. So it kind of went together and it had that dead space in the movie. It's like, why was this in the movie? It's like, why are we having this conversation? Y'all gonna cut this out. So I guess that editing part, you'll probably hate the editing on this, Tori. So uh -oh. <laughs> well, no J cuts. No J cuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they forgot to do a lot of editing. They just left, they just left this going. Um <laughs> also I guess just the premise of the bad guy, like I, well. Can we spoil stuff for you? Or I mean, is this a, this is a review that for the movie, right? Spoil the whole movie. Go ahead. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> All right. So cool. So just him. So just the bad guy being his, uh, you know, his partner, and basically mm. only doing this just because he didn't know nothing else to do after he got out of the military or whatnot. I mean, I I don't know. I guess the reasoning for him just wanting to kill his own friends mm. was kind of stupid. It's like, oh, it's a name mm. on the paper, and we do this now. I'm like okay but this is somebody that it's a part of your organization and like why would you just suddenly change i mm -hmm. thought you were dead man so is that okay for you to kill the rest of the team because you're because you thought denzel was dead i know you just confused with you <laughs> when you see the movie you'll go back to this part you're just like why did he do this again and uh -oh. and i don't understand they knew that denzel was badass so i'm like why do y'all just like not just shoot this dude like right here like yeah. you know mm -hmm. he's gonna kill you like he just told you he's gonna kill you, like to mm -hmm. your face, Don't all three, all four of you. I'm Don't gonna kill you, and I'm gonna kill you. I'm glad I can't. I wish I could kill you twice. Like that was that was mm -hmm. his line directly to them, like four feet away. I might have just shot him right there. And right. I, I'm like, just shoot him. Like oh, no. And then he wants to go pick up the little the little girl and go get in the car with the wife. I'm like, dang, he played that real good. So. But mm -hmm. just just the premise of the bad guy, he you kind of knew who, who who the bad guy was like as soon as you saw his face. I was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, he the bad guy. He just looked dumbfounded like the bad guy. Like he just looked like something's off when you first mm -hmm. see him. So that I didn't really feel they could have dug something else in there. It had that little bit of the uh, Punisher feel, the like with his friend turning back on him, mm -hmm. and you know having that type of thing, but. Other than that, the last part, I'm going to tell you, it was, to me, it was just kind of overdoing it. With a hurricane, y'all <laughs> running through a dang town, you know, playing like laser tag or something over here. You know, it's wow. just, I don't know. I would I, I love the ending of the first movie so much, like him being in that warehouse in a closed environment and having to come face to face with everybody. And like and nobody being able to hide and getting shot necessarily. Like he had to use tools, fight people <clears throat> hand to hand, sneak around. And this one, he was like, I'm going to just run around these houses, and y'all got to chase me, you five people out here in a hurricane. And this dude's going to stand up here on a tower, and act like he can see somebody and shoot them with a uh, a sniper rifle. Like, why are you up there? Like, it's a hurricane. You can't see nobody up there. <laughs> so, yeah, still you feel I can keep going on and on about this, but I'm, I see Rashad looking at me like, where's your tower at, bro? <laughs> Go ahead, Rashad. <laughs> No, look, look, look. The uh, the first movie, I'll tell you, I'll tell you for real. That that uh that scene where they were fighting in the Home Depot, that joint was amazing. Oh yeah, yes, I forgot about that. That was great. When we just, That's what when I've been saying the whole time. You just said warehouse, man. Nobody calls Home Depot a warehouse. It's Home like Depot. Warehouse. It's, it's built Home Depot. <laughs> That was one of the highlights of the first movie. To him having to, you know, drill, have to find the dude with the, the one dude with the drill, and then having to make yeah. a 
kill the other guy. Mm -hmm. That was uh, yeah, that was dope in the first movie. So I, I got a question though. Uh, was it so? This movie wasn't connected to the first, you know, the first him dealing with all the Russian stuff from the first movie. Like I guess he really yeah. did kill everybody. You know, he yeah. went to Russia yeah. and blew up the embassy or whatever from the first movie. So there wasn't anybody left. I, I was assuming. It was gonna be connected to that. Yeah, he killed. It he killed all the rest. Feels like it definitely feels like the Punisher. Uh, like when Punisher came in on Daredevil season two, mm -hmm. he killed like everybody. And then on see his actual season, he didn't have nobody else to kill, so he had to deal with his own friends. <laughs> That's kind of how it felt with Equalizer with two. <laughs> okay, 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 I see. Okay, well, uh, Rashad, what what would you say? Uh, how did the movie feel, and and what didn't make any sense about it? I know you got some of those. <laughs> left to right. <laughs> left to right. Left. Left. Left to right. <laughs> left to right. The right. Let me tell you something. I punish the guilty, and if you're lucky, I give you the opportunity to do the right thing. But this ain't one of them times. <laughs> you know what? I'm your daddy. Your mama just ain't tell you yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a good one liner. I love that part. <laughs> Real quick, uh, uh, Charlie, you asked what was I uh, was I looking at? Uh, I was looking at you showing uh, clips of uh, Magnum PI on your computer back there. <laughs> it's back to the Punisher now. But I was like, wait a second. There ain't no Denzel in that clip. <laughs> what yeah, is that? It was only a two minute clip, bro. Yeah, two <laughs> clip on them. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You ran out of time, and it clip change. <laughs> Speaking of which, all right. So, um, I'm not going to talk about the pacing because Charlie already mentioned it. But yes, the pacing is very, very bad. Um, they didn't do really a real nitpicky thing. They didn't do a really good job of explaining his his whole OCD thing. Like his whole, you know, beep, beep. like he did that twice, and then. Why? Why does he do that? Like, is there a reason he does that? Like, they didn't even explain that in the first movie. Why he does that? He just does it. He looks at his watch. It was twenty nine seconds. Okay, like it would have been really good if they showed something where he he's compelled to do that, and if he doesn't do that, he can't function. Like in the car scene, like when the guy was coming at him out of a sudden, it would have been nice for him to hit the watch right then. Like, okay, this dude's about to die real quick. But or at least him try to hit it and then the guy grab his hand or something like that. I mean, they just did it. They introduced it and then you never saw it again. It just it doesn't they make, do any sense. make that, him look cool. I guess it's just, it's just to make him look twice. Cool. Yeah, it's just to make, make him look cool. cool. I'm a badass. I'm Denzel Washington. I can. I just a couple kill, dee -dee -dee. kill people in 29 seconds twice and then never refer to it again. That's pretty cool. That's what he does. <laughs> That's cool. uh, let me see here. The action scenes really didn't build on each other like at all. Like uh, Charlie and I were talking about it last night. Like when you have a great speaker, you know, let's say like at a church, if you ever been to like a really good church, like if the choir gets everything going, you know, they really get the oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. And then, you know, the preacher jumps up there and he, he jumps right on that. That's right. Say amen. A good job to the choir, you know, and he keeps it going and he could jump right into his thing and everybody's hype. You know, versus, you know, sometimes you have other preachers where the choir's getting high, sweet cheese, sweet cheese, and the preacher goes up there. Sweet yeah. cheese. <laughs> That's right. Oh Amen. God. And they kind of wait for everything to die down. And then, all right, let's turn to Genesis 4 5. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like all that energy is gone. Is that the same type of thing that happens in this movie? When there were fight scenes, like Charlie said, they were really good, but they're so far in between that your mo the momentum, there's no momentum in this movie at all. Like it just, it just high point, all right, 30 minutes of nothing, literally nothing. So, um, this this does not seem like a true sequel to the original at all. I'm gonna piggyback right off of what Charlie said. It just it does. If I don't know if it was directed by a different person, but it sure felt that way. I mean, the pacing was different. the The flow was different. How he reacted to people was different. What he was trying to do was different. Like it seemed like um, in the first movie, it was more grounded like more street level type of stuff like he was dealing with the russians but how they interacted with what was happening with him versus this one is like dealing with the cia it is not really street level at all except for miles uh, the young man that he was trying to save that's the only street level thing that it, that dealt with so the two movies are completely different to me 
if this was just like, you know, um, Denzel Washington CIA operative, I probably would have enjoyed it better. Like if I wasn't expecting the sequel to a really good movie, if I just sat down and just watched Denzel act and I wasn't expecting to be a lot of good pacing and they didn't show every scene basically in the, in the trailers, I probably would have enjoyed it more. But pretty much everything you see in the trailers is everything that happens in the movies other than the hurricane scene. So it's just, I don't know. And the last thing, yeah, there was definitely a this don't make no sense scene. When he went to rescue Miles and he just beating up people, kicked in the door, pulled a gun on everybody. That was funny. Dude had a hat on. He, <laughs> he used his gun and puts his hat off. You know, told the dude, you know, I'm your daddy and all that type of stuff. Just rolled up and then grabbed Miles and left. And they were like, who is that guy? I don't know. And they just sat there. I thought they were was coming, like, I thought they were gonna come down there like, oh, you gonna knock, knock my dude out. I'm coming yeah. to my space. Like, no, they just like set up in the room, like, we're not moving. I ain't going right. down there to see him at all. Miles is on his own. <laughs> right. You know, they was like, that dude had a gun. <laughs> 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 I mean, they were trying to build Miles up, like, "Hey, man, you better go, go out there. If you don't come back with no bullet, hey, if you if you got bullets, don't come back. Don't come back if you got bullets." I'm like, they were trying to build him up, but they punks, they straight punks, because this there rolled up in there, slapped him around a little bit, talked junk to him, grabbed with your boy, and left, and had time yeah. to be downstairs and have a whole conversation with him. <laughs> so, Rashad, Rashad, yeah. just when you were saying that, look what I just saw on the trailer. Watch my trailer real quick. Right here. The way you stabbed him. Did you see him just kill him? Yep. That was a hurricane scene. <laughs> when he kills the, the dude thing. at the end. And just, so he Daddy, just killed him. <laughs> just watch the trailers. Here, here's what you do. Watch our <laughs> review. And then you you know. <laughs> you watch the review, you will have watched the whole movie. <laughs> so I just need to try it. I the need last to kill you, That's it. And, and I got the whole movie. Yeah, basically. So, last thing I'm gonna tell you is that we all gotta pay for our sins. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we do appreciate it. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't, I feel like I'm um feel like I'm I'm still on the edge here. I I might go see it. I guess you know if if there's nothing in the next couple of weeks, we have seen some good trailers coming out this this past week for um from yeah. Sandy Comic Con. Comic -Con. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. and, and and Aquaman that that looks kind of dope. Godzilla. Yeah, that guy it does not look dope. Ooh. It does not look dope at all. It looks very fake. What? Next next God. topic. What? That what looks fake? fake? The Aquaman, the guy, he looks like so. It looks oh like I'm playing a video game, bro. Really? I am not excited about Aquaman at all. Really? Let me that's tell you something. That's just your DC hate. That's just your DC. That's hate. a that's a. There's a redhead that's in Aquaman, and there's a redhead that's at the beginning of uh, Glass. Which one looks better? Glass. One of Aquaman. Looks a whole lot doggone better. God damn that doggone that her red hair was killing me. I'm sorry. Hey, that glass, uh, that glass trailer. Hey, that's gonna yeah, be that look good too. That's that look real good. For you on Glass that. looks great. <laughs> where, where, where you gonna take it off your head? That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. I guess she control from, water. She's underwater, bro. The fish are nice and vibrant colors in in the ocean. So yeah, of course she's not gonna this. like a like a woman that's up on Earth. She's a different type of human. Under the she's sea, amazing. I got water connection. <laughs> so I we need. I think we should do something. Well. I don't know if we we'll do a show, but maybe we'll do something that we can uh, talk about the Comic Con trailers and stuff because they they had a lot of stuff coming out. So yeah, there was good. a lot of good stuff coming out. Yeah, that was good. Um, last but not least, let's 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 ask if people should see this this uh, this film real quick before before we sign out. Give me your last and final thoughts, and tell me if people should see this film. Uh, Rashad, you go first. It's not a hard pass because Denzel is still a very good actor and the and the scenes that are good are good. Just go into it knowing that it's really slow. I, but I'm going to say overall, no, nah, you don't you don't really need to see it. If you don't have to see it, you don't really need to. OK, what would you say, Chuck? Um, I would say watch the first one. And then just wait for this one to come out and then watch this one after that. 
but just watch the first one. If you're thinking about going to go see it, just watch the first one again. It'll save right. you some money and some, you know, you know, some, you know, you won't be upset after you leave the movie. Like, well, but it, it could be right. good if you just want to see Denzel be Denzel. Hey, take take your lady out, go out, check it out, take your friends out, go watch Denzel do his thing. So it's kind of it's up to you. It's up to you. Just like Rashad said, don't have a bunch of expectations. It's supposed to be better than the first one. So you know. yeah, exactly. I'm, I feel you. Like instead of watching um, Equalizer two, watch Equalizer twice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think y'all just saved me some money. I think y'all just saved saved me some money. Uh, I think I'll wait for this one to come out on on uh on uh on Netflix or on uh on cable so I can just watch watch both of them together at home. Uh, I say the first one was really good, so yeah, I might take uh, Chuck's advice and just watch the first one, and then take Rashad's advice and watch the set, the first one again, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, just leave it at that. But um. We really appreciate y'all joining us uh, here at Color Commentary. Make sure you subscribe. As we like to say, subscribe to survive. Uh, if you have not joined our Facebook group, uh, Color Commentary, where we uh, share a lot of, uh, of, of uh, trailers and videos and we have discussions with everyone about the upcoming uh, videos and movies that we've seen recently. Um, yes. Also, check down in, the, in the, the description there. You'll be able to see our our uh, playlist where you can can watch our Marvel videos, all the things that we've reviewed in the past. Again, I uh, want to say thank you. And uh, this has been Color Commentary, where we give you views from an equal side. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> and it's got to be. Then